the New Testament makes it abundantly clear about two things regarding Jesus' temptations. One, that they were real. The other, that they were very much like our own. Jesus was not merely pretending to be human. He really was like us in all things but sin. His struggles with temptation was not some sort of pious make-believe or charade. His struggle was real. This is perhaps the greatest difference between Jesus' life and our own. We can get away with being shallow and leading superficial lives, putting on airs, presenting ourselves as someone we are not, doing things to attract attention and admiration. As we look at the temptations of Jesus, we need to look at how we are tempted to be less than real in our own lives. Jesus was first tempted to turn stone into bread. Luke says he had been fasting 40 days. Obviously, he had grown weak. Jesus knew how hungry the world was for the truth only that he could give. He also knew hungry people would follow anyone who gave them something to eat. So right here, at the beginning of his public ministry, Jesus was tempted to place the needs of his own body over the needs of the soul to make food for the body his work rather than food for the soul. We're faced with the same temptation every day. We have needs that must be met for food, clothing, shelter, transportation, education, health care, and so on. What position do these needs hold in your life? What priority do you give them? Are there means to an end by which you live? Or have they become the purpose for which you live? For example, do you eat to live or live to eat? How much of your day is spent deciding what you'll wear, what you'll eat, what you'll drink, what, what you're going to do? Jesus had to make a choice, and so do we. What will be the major concern of your life? What is your ultimate goal in life? Satisfying your material needs or seeking spiritual values like love, compassion, gratitude, generosity? Next, Jesus looked at the kingdoms of the world in all their glory and dreamed of claiming them for himself. What he was really being tempted to do was to forego the cross. There were two, two roads he could travel. One, the way of force. The other, other, the way of love. The way of co coercion or the way of gentle persuasion. One was the way of the world. The other, other the way of God. One was the easy way, the other the right way. Jesus had to choose, and so do we. We constantly have to make choices. The wrong choices always seem to be easier than the right ones. Bad habits are easy to form and hard to break. Good habits are difficult to form and easy to break. It's easier to quit than to pick yourself up and start again. It's easier to hold a grudge than to forgive, to make excuses than to accept responsibility for failures. The right choice always seems harder than the wrong one. But choose we must between the easy thing and the right thing. 
Jesus chose to be in obedience to his Father, which led to the cross. Finally, the devil suggested Jesus leap from the top of the temple in order to prove God's promise to protect him from harm. But he rejected this, knowing it would say nothing real about life. He did not seek to prove his father's love for him, for Jesus. Faith was not a way to escape danger, but his tower of strength in the midst of danger. He never allowed his faith to become shallow or his life unreal. He enjoyed the flowers of the field. He cried with friends he loved at one's death. He laughed. He celebrated. He saw innocence in the face of children. He accepted the hospitality of sinners and the rejection of the self-righteous. He could love without being loved. He hated without hating. Jesus' strength came from his abiding trust in God, and so can ours. The temptations Jesus underwent in the desert were neither his first, nor would they be his last. With him, it was a lifelong struggle, right up to the hour he died. It will be the same for us. But he's been there before us. He's faced temptation and conquered it. He has shared our humanity so we can share his divinity. He has shared our experience so that we can share his victory. His victory, the triumph of the cross. God is good. And all the time.